Acoustics is the science of sound, including its production, transmission, and its effects. When we hear sound, really, it's our eardrums that vibrate due to the sound energy in the air. Sound waves can travel through many different types of material, including air, water, wood, and metals. We consider unwanted sound noise. And to minimize unwanted sounds, we should learn to use acoustical products and systems. First, we need to understand the science of sound. Let's start with sound paths. Airborne sound is what we hear when sounds radiate from a source directly into the air. Some examples are passing traffic, music, voices in the next room, and so forth. Structure-borne sound, on the other hand, travels through solid building materials. And examples of this are the sound of footsteps on the floor above, or a door knock. Other examples of common airborne noise are aircraft, highway, and industrial noises. The federal government offers guidelines on controlling these noises. Voices and music are airborne noise. Also motors, machinery, and office equipment. And conditioned airflow through ducts can generate unwanted airborne sounds. Some examples of structure-borne and impact noise would be footsteps and door slams. Plumbing vibrations move as structure-borne noise. And so do vibrations from mechanical equipment. Rain impact on a building can be noise. Think of rain on a metal roof over a quiet place like a chapel. Sound has three properties, frequency, wavelength, and amplitude. We'll look at all three, but first, here's how sound waves spread or propagate. Sound waves propagate in three dimensions as expanding spheres of pressure waves. Think of blowing a soap bubble and then another inside of it, and then another, and so on and they expand out infinitely through the air. These sound waves radiate directly around the source and they decrease in amplitude, loudness, as they get farther from the source. As sound travels away from the source, the sound energy is reduced by half as the distance doubles. In this case, the sound diminishes by six decibels at one meter and then by 12 decibels at two meters. Frequency is one property of sound. This can also be referred to as pitch. Frequency is the number of cycles per second produced by a sound wave. It's expressed in hertz, and the sound we hear is radiated in all directions from a sound source. The human hearing range is 16 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The second property, wavelength, is just that the distance between the start and the end of a sound wave cycle, wavelength. And amplitude or loudness is the third property. This illustration shows two sounds with the same wavelength but with different amplitudes or loudnesses. So how is sound measured? When we measure sound, we're measuring the sound pressure of a wave, which is the relative loudness of that sound wave. Acoustical engineers use decibels to quantify sound. Here's a table of typical sound pressure levels in decibels, ranging from a whisper, which is about 20 decibels, to the threshold for pain, which is about 120 decibels. Most activities among people, conversations in offices and homes, are in the 50 to 80 decibel range. For example, in an office or restaurant or public place, once you get over 80 decibels, it gets difficult to communicate effectively. Here's a table of subjective human response to sound level changes. If you are thinking about system performance or sound ratings of building components, you can see here that a difference of up to 2 decibels is not noticeable. Only when you're dealing with sound level changes in the 5 to 8 decibel range are changes clearly noticeable. A sound change of 9 or 10 dB is perceived as twice as loud or half as loud. Later, we'll see practical uses of these measurements. One thing to note is that sound level combinations are not linearly additive, they're logarithmic. So measuring sounds and sound controls gets a bit complex.